Norway Lutheran Church. Oh, now there I am. <laughs> Welcome back to worship here at Norway Lutheran Church. We're very glad all of you are here in person and joining us on our YouTube channel. We're glad that you're here today and worshiping with us this morning. I'm excited to say I actually have some announcements of things happening to share with you again. Isn't that exciting? Yay! First off, our prayer shawl ministry, we bless the prayer shawls up here so you've all had a chance to see them and then we tend to give those out to people as needed when they're in a really low spot to know that God loves, surrounds them even through the tough times. We're running out of those. So if you or someone you know likes to make that kind of thing, I think we have some of the yarn here we can get to you. If you need help with the yarn, let me know. Um, we'll make sure that you, we connect you with the supply. But we really need some more of them. So if you or someone you know could help us out, please pass the word around about that. Next week, we have a special event. We're going to have at the 1030 service is going to be outside. And there'll be two options. You can worship there in person in a lawn chair or a comfy chair that you bring to sit outside. Or we're going to have an FM transmitter. So if you remember the old drive-in days where you could hear it through your radio, that will be an option for our worship next week, too, as we honor our graduates from high school. So I invite you to come and to sit in your car if you don't feel comfortable yet to get out, or to come and sit outside at 1030 and to celebrate our high school graduates. If it rains, we'll postpone a week, but we're going to all hope and pray all week for good weather next Sunday, okay? All right, so that's next Sunday, the 21st of June. And finally, I just want to remind everyone, especially those worshiping at home, this basket on the altar contains our to-go communion kits. If you're worshiping at home and you want to participate in Holy Communion, you can stop by on Sundays between 9 and 10. Pastor Mark and I will be outside. We'll give you the kits that you can take communion when you go home. It's all pre-consecrated because it's been here on the altar during worship, and then it's handed to you. So everything is good to go. Christ is in with and under that bread. And next week it'll be bread and little wine cups as well. So we invite you to remember that those options are there so you can fully participate as you watch at home. With those announcements, we're ready to worship here today. So I invite you to rise as you're able for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. We have denied your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear differences and do not welcome others, as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Opening him is we all are one in mission.
Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts, that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about to all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out the demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. God's grace and peace and love are yours in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Patrick Green was known by his neighbors in Henderson County, Texas, as a professed atheist. He was notorious every single Christmas season for threatening to sue Henderson County because of their display of the nativity at the courthouse. Why? Well, Green says his experience with Christians was of narrow-minded individuals who had all treated him unkindly. Well, that changed when 63-year-old 63 Green learned that he had a detached retina. He was forced to give up driving his yellow cab and resigned himself to the impending blindness. You see, eye surgery cost more than $20,000 and he said they didn't even regularly have enough money for regular bills and expenses and groceries. And even if he did do the surgery, there was no guarantee that it would work. You see, Green was not a very positive person as well. Meanwhile, Green's predicament became known to the people in his neighborhood and the people of the church in that neighborhood, Sand Springs Baptist Church. There, the pastor, Eric Graham, decided he should call on Green and find out more of his needs related to this surgery. Patrick Green said that they needed groceries more than he needed this surgery. So the pastor left that day with the simple promise that he would see what he could do to help the man out. Green later said that he was flabbergasted when the Christian folks made good on their promise and a check for $400 showed up to help. The money went to pay for rent and for groceries and other expenses that were needed right then. But that wasn't the end, because they also said more money was on the way to help with the cost of surgery. Green was so amazed at the generosity of those church folks in Henderson County that he said he was thinking now about writing a book. And he's going to call that book the real Christians of Henderson County, Texas. Because Green said, and I quote, these people are acting like what the Bible says Christians do. And you know what? Green now says he's going to show his appreciation to that whole community by buying a star for that nativity scene at the courthouse next Christmas. 
found this story this week and I thought, isn't this a great example of compassion from the people of that congregation of Sand Springs Baptist Church? True compassion that changed the heart. In our gospel for today, Jesus too shows compassion for people as he heals them. But there's more than just that miracle going on here. Look what Matthew says is Jesus' motivation for this compassion. It's in verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Can you think of a better description of people then or now? harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. It's a beautiful description of contemporary life, don't you think? A marvelous metaphor, or to be more grammatically correct, a striking simile. It would have been easy, I think, for Jesus, as a preacher in the day, to go in and condemn the harassed and helpless people in the crowds. After all, that's what many good preachers have done over the generations, right? Name the sins of all of us who gather to hear the word, preach hellfire and damnation for those sins in hopes that people turn their hearts back to God because of the faith that awaits if they don't. Condemning the crowd is what many people, in fact, expect. Many people, including Patrick Green, that confirmed atheist from Henderson County, associate Christians with this kind of condemnation. But Jesus today tells us he takes a totally different approach. He has compassion for the crowd. Showing compassion is what Jesus was and is all about. And so he calls his first disciples and us to share his compassion as well. That's why he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. We are sent out into the harvest, out into the crowds to share Jesus' compassion with all people, and then to watch as hearts turn around. That is who we are and what we are to be about carrying Jesus' compassion and love into our world today. So stop and think about that call with me for a moment. There are so many different voices, different forces pulling and harassing each and every one of us each day. Those forces seem to be tearing apart families, communities, and even churches with their varying agendas and calls to action. And to this particular mess that we each find ourselves living in today, Jesus' voice calls to each of us from his word, calls us to make his compassion and love real for all the crowds that we find around us today. And sometimes, that means that we have to have our hearts opened to what the real needs are. A vicar in England, what we would call a pastor, went to visit one of the well-off people in his congregation. It was a bitterly cold winter day, and so he had on one of those really big, heavy wool with overcoats. As the visit drew to a close, the vicar told the man that he wished to ask him something confidential. This caused the man to simply follow the vicar outside. He didn't pause to put on his own coat. He didn't think it was necessary. After all, what could take too long that the vicar would have to ask for him? But the vicar, cozy in his heavy winter overcoat, began talking about one thing and then the next and then the next in casual conversation, leaving his host to shiver there in the cold. Well, he kept saying, couldn't we go inside again, vicar? It's really cold out here. But the vicar, again, just continued chatting with small talk. 
You mean pastors like to talk? Yeah, even when they're not supposed to. <laughs> At last, though, this man could take it no more, and he said through chattering teeth, Vicar, if you don't ask me what you want right now, I'm going to die here in the cold. Sir, said the vicar, there is a family whose father has been laid off. I need enough money from you to help supply fuel to keep them warm through this cold winter. Immediately, the rich man peeled a roll of notes from his pocket and handed it to the vicar. He said, he explained his generosity this way. Vicar, now I know why you left me standing so long in the cold. You know that from my comfortable life, I'd never really been that cold. Now I have experienced this misery for myself, and my heart has opened up to a need of which I was before unaware. My heart has been opened up to a need of which I was before unaware. Will you pray with me? Lord, you did indeed have compassion on the crowds of people who came to you, harassed and helpless as they were. We come to you much the same way today, being pulled by so many forces that sometimes we have no idea which voice to listen to. First, Lord, help us to listen to your voice, reminding us we are loved and calling us to be laborers sent out to share your compassion today. Then help us all to open our hearts to the real needs all around us. Guide us to reach out in love to all our neighbors, even the atheists, in any ways that we are able, so they too will know your love and compassion. Amen. Heal those who are sick or in need of care, 
especially Kathleen and Katie, Brian and Taylor, Rachel, Maggie and Wally, Earl, Johanna, Donna and Christine, Ida, Steve, Jan, Diane, Marge, Gloria, Stephen, Karen, Audrey and Janet, Robert, Ron, Kathy, Pam and Brenda. Feed all who hunger, empower all those voices go, that go unheard and help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation, that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work, that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us now continue with the sacrament of Holy Communion. In the night to which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant of my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. When you gather as my family, do this in the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My beautiful family, our Lord's table has been set and everyone is welcome. As in previous weeks, we invite you to come up with a six foot separation amongst you. When you come to the front, please take off your mask, otherwise it's really hard to get the food inside. You may be seated, thus it will direct you forward.
has given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Would you please rise for the blessing? May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of this welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life, Amen. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Our closing hymn is 669. 